Alright, welcome back to Games for Everybody. I'm your host, Matt, here again with my special guest, Levi. We are playing some more Last Door. We're in that room where you develop photos. Uh, I'm just looking around to see if there is anything more I can look at. Uh, looks like there's really nothing... Ooh, there's a jar of cyanide. Don't drink that. Huh. <laughs> I was just about to. <laughs> Alright, so... I know it said that recipe for developing photos. I know it said I used about five or six drops of cyanide. Let me see what it said the rest of it was. One ounce of the spirit solution and then five or six drops of cyanide. So I need to find the spirit solution next. Uh, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to use it for just yet, but might as well be on the lookout for it. Yeah, it's always good to have handy. Oh, yeah. So I have that hook rope. I think I can get that bucket. Uh, back down in the uh, backyard. Oh, down the well. Yep. Because there are no more rooms I can go to right now, so it seems like that's the next logical step. It's always logical to go down a well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The The logic of these games is kind of funny. It's just you, you find an item and you use it on something, so it's like, you know, what, like, what item could logically go where, so I'm going to try the hook rope on the well. Yep. Alright, I'm, I'm pulling something out. Let me see if I got the bucket. Yep. Within the mud and dirt inside the bucket, there was a small brass bird. Interesting. Alright. Uh, I can keep it. So, right now, I have a jar of cyanide and a little bird figurine. Now that is not dodgy at all. Nah. I still can't get into that greenhouse. I have no idea what to do with the bird, so I'm going to go back inside the house and see if there's anything I can try it on. Uh, if I run out of ideas of what to do, I have the walkthrough on my phone that I can look up. Uh, because cheating is fun. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes it's necessary. Yeah, true. I'll see if there's anything that looks like it might go somewhere. Uh, downstairs doesn't seem to have anything. <laughs> Alright, I'm back in the bedroom. Let's see, there's doesn't look like there's anything else here. Maybe I can show the bird to the guy. Oh, so, oh, when I shake the bird, it makes a noise like there's something inside. What about that grave outside? Oh, yeah, there's, um... There's still nothing I can do with it. Uh, I would need something to dig it if I wanted to. Alright, so the bird... It says it shakes like there's something inside of it, so maybe I can... Like, throw it against something? Get whatever's in... Get whatever's inside? Hmm. The clock? Um... I don't know. I don't know. The clock definitely means something somewhere. Maybe yeah. I'm going to see if there's anything that I can use to, to break this bird. Oh, I, I'm in another room that I didn't even uh, know about. So there was that other door that I completely forgot. I'm in like a study. There's a fireplace, a desk, and then a window looking outside. Let's see. Uh, there's an envelope in the fireplace. Um, a large envelope of black felt covered in dust and ashes. It's labeled with a warning, don't open it under white light. Well, I'll take it, and I'll open it uh, once I can fix the light in the dark room. There's a letter on the desk. Let's see. Dear Alexander, I have excellent news. A contact from the university has given me access to a 12th century alchemical tome containing an amazing formulary. There's no doubt that sometimes mere contemplation takes the mind to places that otherwise it would have never visited. Leafing through the grimoire and marveling at the, ex marveling at the exquisite illumination of its pages, I've been struck by a sudden epiphany, a radical but elegant method that I've decided to try. Forgive me for not providing any information about the method itself. As soon as I get down definite results I'll write to you immediately. I believe fortune has truly smiled upon us today. And then there's a something written in Latin, videte ne quisiat. I, I can't speak Latin, so I don't know if I'm saying that right. It sounded pretty good. Uh, do, do you know any Latin? No. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, just wondering. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they, I don't know if they teach it over there or not. Uh, oh, 
I would love to learn Latin, but no, we get French or German. Wow, okay, yeah, um, the, the most common ones here, um, we didn't have German in my, uh, my high school, otherwise I would have done it. You had either Spanish or French, and the, the French teacher was terrible. Like, they, they didn't actually learn French in that class. Um, they would just, like, sit around and watch movies because the teacher didn't care, and then one day she had a mental breakdown and just quit her job that day, and we never saw her again. You know, it was kind of pretty much the same at mine. Um, we had um, each year had a different one. So if he was in year seven, you'd have Sp uh, German, then French in the other years. So mine landed on German and the teacher was German and she was good in her own right. But nobody, just nobody was interested. We all wanted to learn Spanish. <laughs> they didn't teach. <laughs> yeah. So it was just like, no, then fine. We can't learn when we want to learn. We're not going to learn it. I got you. Yeah, my... Uh, my first Spanish teacher was actually still uh, in in school learning Spanish, which that raises a lot of red flags right there. And then my my second year Spanish teacher actually spoke Spanish, but um, she was a horrible, horrible person. And then my third year Spanish teacher actually spoke Spanish and was a good teacher. So finally got a good one. Yeah, it's a shame. I think they should put more effort into teaching languages and getting good teachers. Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, I um, I don't know how it is over there. It seems, the way you're talking, it seems similar over here to where they just, what's the best way to say, they just kind of half-ass it a little bit. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I speak English and a teeny tiny bit of Spanish. That's about it. Yeah, I'm kind of the same English and just a little bit of German, uh, and yeah. it's like, no, you know, you don't get to learn what you want to, and I think they should teach Latin, considering most of the English language, well, not maybe most, but a lot of it is Latin, and nobody uh, oh, definitely. knows that, so, yeah. yeah. And then you have people in places like Sweden and Finland who are like, oh, I speak uh, Finnish, English, French, German, and then like a yeah, couple more. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, I'm a little jealous. But anyway, uh, let's get back to this. So <laughs> yeah. there's an invoice. Let's see what it says. May this document serve as a record of the payment made corresponding to the following work. The cuckoo clock mechanism has been modified to give the strokes exclusively at quarter past six in the afternoon. In addition, a special device and a switch have been added to synchronize all clocks in the house. Quarter past six. Okay. Interesting. See, there's a bookshelf here. Uh, the shelf is lined with strange and complex books. Some titles include The Movements of Shadows, Preserving the Mind, and Lessons Beyond Nature. It doesn't look like wow. there's real. It doesn't look like there's really anything else here. Oh, it's that that note again. Hang on. I uh, don't need that. Let's see, can I smash that bird against anything? No. I don't know. The only connection I'm making is bird and cuckoo clock. Yeah, there's that envelope. I don't know. I'll I'll check out the cuckoo clock again. Oh no, that's that's the wrong room. Let me go back to the bedroom. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I'm gonna check the walkthrough and see if uh, see if there's any hints. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, the bird fits in the cuckoo clock. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens now. Uh, there's nothing else I can do with it. Weird. Well, now I'm very much, uh, <laughs> stumped. Uh, let me try that kitchen again and see if there's anything that I missed in here. Old bottles. Alright. Walk through time. Let's see what I missed. The good thing about this game is if you use an like you can't use an item wrong. So um, in a lot of old games like this, like King's Quest, you could use an item wrong and then it would be gone forever, and you would have to start the game all over again. Oh, that kind of sucks. I mean, you want it to be a little bit difficult, but not ridiculous. Right, not impossible. Like th there, there's no way that you can make this game unbeatable like it's always you're always going to have a chance uh so yeah. let's let's see what we got so, yeah so we got the lamp we got the let's see we got the hook 
We got the envelope. Ah, okay, so I have to go back up to that room uh, with the photos, to the dark room. Alright, looks like I can unscrew this light bulb. And it's completely dark in here. Oh, I have my lantern. Alright. Um. Oh, I have to go back to the woods. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing about this game is some of the uh, some of the old. Um, oh, what's this? Eh, there's a dead deer uh, in the path. But uh, before I investigate that, I was gonna say. Um, some of the things that you have to do in this game aren't really too intuitive. Like, in some of the old episodes um, that I played with other people, it would be things like you have to take this item and connect it with something that, like, a lot of the combinations and the way that you use things doesn't even really make sense. Uh, like, something you wouldn't do in real life, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so Sounds like, good. yeah, so like, shatter the bottle and, uh, and, you know, Tie this, uh, tie this rag around it, and then drop it down the hole. And I mean, I'm exa <laughs> I I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. So you just forget about your own logic and just check everything. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's a dead deer. Its abdomen torn that open. It looks looks recently dead. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what am I supposed to do with it? Let's let's keep walking. Can you eat it? Oh, that's gross. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I mean, if it's recently dead, it, hey, I don't know. Well, come on, you're supposed to be in England. That's what we like over here. <laughs> nice. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. See, now I have to use. Okay. Here's what I'm talking about about how the logic doesn't make sense. So, so you know how there's that dark room where you develop film, right? Mm -hmm. So the lights in a dark room are red because for some reason red light doesn't uh, doesn't like wash out the photos or ruin them when you're developing them. So I have to use the light bulb I got on the dead deer to coat it in blood so the light will be red. S see what okay. I mean? Okay. So how are you supposed to know to work that out? Does it just like pop up as a thing? Hello, this is what you do. I, I know. That's my whole point. Like. It's a real outside the box thinking, like not something I would ever think to do in real life. Like use the bulb on the deer. I don't know. That's kind of good though. I mean, it's a game. You want to be challenged. Oh yeah. mind-numbing ones out there. It's just if I ever saw a dead deer in the road, uh, the last thing that I would start rubbing a light bulb on it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, huh, this looks interesting. Like that, that's the last thing I would do in real life. But eh, whatever. Game logic. All right, so let's put that light bulb in. Um, can I open the envelope? Inside the envelope, there's a glass plate, one side covered with an opaque substance. I put it in the basin. Okay, so I can't do anything with it yet. Uh, apparently now I can open the... Um, I can open the door to the greenhouse back out front. Wasn't there something um, right at the beginning that sounded dangerous about that? Oh, the uh, there was just a uh, there was just a bar on it, so I couldn't get in. Yeah, it's yeah, but then in that thing you were reading, it said that they put things in there to. Oh, oh yeah. No, it's one of the things you read. Vaguely, I don't know. Let's check it out. So, I'm inside. Um, part of the glass on the outside of the greenhouse has been broken, and there's like the plants have all overgrown, and there's vines and moss everywhere. See, there's a statue of an angel. Its head is missing. Okay. 
Yeah, totally normal. And then there's another angel statue, but it, uh, it's it got a sad look on its face. So it says there's a bottle here that I can grab. Oh, I see it. It's it's really hard to see. All right, that's the that's the acid that I have to pour to develop the film. So I have that glass plate. Uh, I can put the was it the the one ounce of oil and then five ounce or five drops of cyanide, and I can see what's on the uh, what's on the plate. Wicked, that'll help. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. I'm back in the dark room, so the oils cause an acidic reaction. All right, let's do the cyanide. All right, so now I have to rinse it off. Let's see if that did anything. An image is appearing on the plate. Uh, it's a photo of Anthony and Alexander. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I, I, <laughs> uh, that was a bit of a jump scare. I'll tell you what happened. So the light started flickering on and off. And of course, you know, it's red and black, so it's real creepy looking. And then two, yeah. pe two people wearing uh, rat masks and black suits were uh, standing right next to me. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, all right, uh, let, let's see what happens. Oh, God, I can walk around. Oh, and the light bulb just went out, and they're gone. Well. Yeah, so that was more than a little creepy. Don't mess around with cyanide, kid. Yeah. Maybe I, I breathed some of it. <laughs> All right, well, maybe I can show that uh, photo to Alexander now and see if that does anything to him. Or just give him the cyanide, just end this episode. <laughs> no. All right, let's see what the photo does with him. Alexander, do you recognize this photograph? Take a look. It's you and our old friend Anthony, and there's someone else blurred in the background. Who's the third figure? Does he mean something to you? Oh, he dropped something. Oh, he says, the bird awaits. The bird awaits. He just keeps saying the same thing over and over again. Looks like he's rocking forward and back. But he, he did drop something. Let's see. Oh, it's a, uh, it's the uh, hand of a clock. Okay, you need to go back to the clock then. Yep, down to the first floor, the grandfather clock. And what did they say? Quarter past six. So let's see if that, let's see if that does anything. All right, I need to set the correct time. So remember, the one upstairs had it at 11.15, but remember the note said 6.15, so I'm going to try 6.15 first. Yeah, and then if that don't work, try the other one, and then, you know. Yep. All right, and there's a lever I can turn. Let's see if that does anything. Did it do anything? I don't think it did anything. I'll try 11.15. Alright, 11.15. Still didn't do anything. Alright, let's, uh, let's cheat. Uh, let's see. Clock hand... Oh, come on. Yeah, it says the cuckoo clock goes off at 6.15, but its face is turned, so 6.15 on there won't be 6.15 here. We need to set it 
Th that makes no sense. I mean, I'm probably missing something, but it says I need to set it to 3 o'clock. Whatever. Yeah, because 15 o'clock is 3 o'clock, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. I don't know about the um, uh, the sixth part, but I just... Yeah, 3 is 15 in the 24-hour clock. Yeah. We wouldn't have on a ground floor of the clock. Oh, the cuckoo clock uh, activated, so let's go back upstairs. Actually, you know what? This is a good place to leave people on a cliffhanger, so let's stop, uh, and we will finish <laughs> this up next time. Uh, so all you guys watching at home, I will see you all later.